When the going gets rough, you know how the saying goes, sometimes things happen, life happens, and it's not always our fault. In this podcast, we'll feature real life testimonials from people like you, from good times to bad, funny memories and hard lessons learned. Everyone has a story and everyone has been there. From business owners to parents to young adults, The Hive Five aims to tell stories of overcoming the struggles of adulting while celebrating the little victories of life. In each podcast, our guests will give insight to five key takeaways from someone who's been there and done that, leaving you better than when you started. Thank you so much for being here today. This is Kagan Henson with Brightbe, and we also have Catherine Parker, Marketing Director of Brightbe, on as well. And today we are so excited to have uh, some amazing people on, and their names are Erica and Chris Lucas, and they are with Stitch Crew. How are you guys doing today? Good, good. Thank you for having us. Doing great. Thanks for having us. Thrilled to be here. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we know that you guys are super busy, and we have had many problems uh, today with our audio and sound, but appreciate your your grace and your forgiveness. Hey, it's the startup life, right? It is the startup life, so every single day, so every single minute. But we want to just uh, get to know you guys a little bit better and understand what Stitch Crew is, and also you are a part of the Thunder Launchpad, and want to know the first 12 weeks of your first uh, launch of Founders and how that went. Yeah, so um, super excited, you know, um, it was a lot of work. <laughs> uh, you were part of it, Bribey was part of it, um, so you kind of yes. know um, how uh, everything ran, but I think a lot of lessons learned, I think a lot of energy, um, we were very pleased. Um, with the quality and the intensity that all of the founders brought to the table. Uh, Would you agree, Chris? Yeah, and I think one thing that's interesting about what we just went through in these 12 weeks is the balance of, you know, we're, we're kind of a startup ourselves, really. And here we are working with 10 companies and we're rounding up mentors and, and trying to advise them and, and walk them through, you know, this startup life and in the same time in parallel we're doing we're doing the same thing so it was fun um we learned we've said this over and over again it's just it's true we learned as much i think from the founders and 10 companies as i'm sure they learned from us and, and we probably learned more but it was it was fun i mean we're ready to do it again so chris and erica tell us why in the world would you start stitch crew like what what actually made you want to do something like this because you guys had uh, good jobs you had some uh, great success in what you were doing and so why would you go back to the startup life uh yeah that's that's a great question Kay. <laughs> we're still we're still trying to to answer that no really we still trying we to understand that uh, yeah no we um to be to be really honest with you, we were um, a little bit frustrated with the fact that that we felt our community wasn't coming in for um, for the founders, right? So we needed to do a little bit more because we strongly believe that most of the uh, challenges that we face as a society um, are not going to be solved through traditional mindset and policy and and just traditional institutions uh, providing minimal support. Um, it's, it's really going to, those problems are going to be solved by, by bold founders like yourself uh, and other entrepreneurs who collectively come together um, to, to help each other and figure out how to solve those problems um, together. So I think that that's what drove us. You know, we could have continued to do what we were doing, live, lived a, a healthy and, and stable life, but, but we felt like we needed to be part of, uh, of the solution and bringing people together and, and providing a platform that supports the entrepreneurs and enables them to tell their story. Yeah, I think the one thing I would add to that is, I think Erica and I and our family were at a little bit of a crossroads with what we were doing prior to the launch pad. I mean, we, if we were to continue to, to do what we were doing and, and we, we were profitable and we, and, you know, we were doing well, but it most likely would have taken us outside of Oklahoma City to, to continue. And 
we made a decision uh, to Erica's point that, you know, that it was important for us to, to just see it happen here. Uh, our roots are, are here and it was just important. So we made that decision and yeah, it, it was, I don't know, I guess maybe a little bit of a sacrifice uh, on some ends, but at the same time, the rewards were, were worth it. And so we, we jumped in. Well, and you guys started out pretty well, uh, you know, to get the Thunder to partner with you guys. I mean, how, how in the world did you guys get that done? <laughs> they, they came begging. No, kidding. <laughs> no. Or the way around. They came to you. Yeah. They were knocking on your door. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, we're, we're super proud and, and grateful for our partnership with the Thunder. Um, and it came together just like uh, hopefully you guys were able to develop relationships through through the Accelerator program. It came through a relationship. I mean, we knew some of the executives at the Thunder um, ever since they moved, they made the decision to move to Oklahoma City um, and uh, had really strong relationships. And really how it came about is that we were discussing the state of our state. And we were talking about how come Chris and I weren't doing more deals here in Oklahoma. And we talked about it. We talked about, you know, it's hard to identify the startups that are doing things. It's, um, you know, we, um, we don't see as much deal flow. So we, we kind of started talking about the problem. And, and then together, we collectively discuss ways that we can maybe offer a potential solution. And that's how, through a lot of coffees, maybe a beer or two, <laughs> we, uh, in, a, in a plan on a napkin, uh, that's how we came to, to what is now the Thunder Launchpad and the Accelerator program. And I think it's funny because we, we get asked, you know, a lot about our partnership with the Thunder and, and people kind of ask along the same lines of why, you know, why are you guys doing this? Why are they doing this? And it honestly is uh, strictly it's, it came, it, the Genesis was a community play. Um, just trying to, to get it started here and support and cultivate the community. And, and honestly was as easy and, and um, it, as simple as that really. Um, it wasn't, there was no hidden motive. There's no hidden agenda or, you know, profit motive to this for, for either side right now. So it just it was a community play. And kudos to the Thunder too, because they could have, you know, they could have gone the traditional route, maybe partner with, with an existing um, institution, perhaps an, a, a university that has some entrepreneurship programs or just, just somebody more stable. But um, I, I, I will always be grateful that they decided to partner with Stitch Girl, although we had only been, you know, doing, doing what we had been doing for about a year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Started. So, yeah. Right. Well, and honestly, I was I was just thinking myself, uh, you know, what makes you guys so special that the Thunder would that choose you to work with? And um, I, I think, you know, you guys say it best in, in a very humble manner is, you know, your experience, but but also just the relationships um, that you were able to, to create and the communication you were able to have with them. And that says something also about the uh, about the Thunder, wouldn't you say? that they were willing to, to explore and also, uh, you know, have those conversations. Yeah, definitely. You know, I think that, um, at the end of the day, I think that, um, because to be quite frank, um, when we were having these discussions, um, Chris and I were happy to help. Um, it started as an ideation. We didn't know if we wanted to commit, um, to, to doing a, a long-term, accelerator play we hadn't ourselves although we have worked with accelerators and with the startup community and the investment community we've never run an accelerator program so we didn't we didn't we weren't sure if this was the right play for us although we were passionate about helping founders but i think that what what made the stitch <laughs> was that we aligned in cultures so something that we told the, the thunder from the very beginning is that if we were to do this that we would be founder friendly uh, and founder first. Uh, that that's always been our ethos with Stitch Crew, is that um, you know we although before we partner with the Thunder, we you know we got our paychecks from investors. Um, our our ethos has always been we work in partnership with the founders because they're really the ones that are solving problems. They're really the ones in the front lines, um, getting hit right. and by by all angles and, and defeating the odds. 
And so I think the vendor appreciated that because they, they themselves were a startup, right? They came to a market um, unlike their competitors. It's not, it's not as big of a market. Um, it's, um, it was new to Oklahoma. Uh, and so they, they also are in a way defeating the odds and, and started as a startup. So I think the culture was definitely something that brought us together and, and that collectively we made the decision that, that we matched, right? That, that our personalities and the way we go about doing business and our business protocols um, were aligned. Fantastic. And so I want to jump on what and highlight a little bit about what you said about defeating the odds. And I, I really would like for you guys to give insight on, on what that truly means, because when when Bright B was going through this program, I think we had an idea of that meant. But moving forward and going through some of the trials that we've experienced and just some of the uh, different challenges uh, in general, uh, defeating the odds meant something completely different. And so if, if one of our listeners was to, to come in and say they want to be a part of Stitch Crew and the Thunder Launchpad, and you were to say, we're, go- we're going to you know, help you defeat the odds, what, what does that look like? Can you give us an example? Yeah, so um, I think that, you know, when, again, when we were ideating, you know, what the accelerator would look like, something that was really important for us is to have cohorts of founders, right? So we create a little bit of a tribe um, of uh, problem solvers because we tell the founders all the time, if you're looking for an accelerator and and you come in with the mindset that the accelerator is gonna solve all of your problems, then you're in it for a long ride. Chris and I don't have all all of the answers, but I think that what we figure out is that collectively, if we do this as a cohort, and we put smart people together willing to help each other out, um, we are in a much better place at defeating the odds, right? We can yeah. problem solve together. Right. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I would say this too. Um, if somebody were to come to us and want to, and want to work with us and, and, you know, and you guys will understand this too. I think, I think the mis- one of the misconceptions of, of many is the, the old business adage of if you build it, they will come. Um, that, that doesn't right. happen. You guys, are experiencing that right now, I think. And same with us. I mean, just because we opened up and accelerated here in partnership with the Thunder doesn't mean that we have people, you know, knocking down our door to to, to apply apply and, and, and fundraise right. and invest. I mean, just that doesn't happen. So, you know, you have to get past that mentality of, oh, this is going to be super easy. All we got to do is curate this business and, and, you know, we're on easy street. Um, that couldn't be further from the truth. That, that is so true. I mean, I, I think that a lot of people, um, not necessarily competitors of ours, but, but people that, that are paying attention to what we're doing have this notion that because we did partner with the Thunder and because we are a little bit unique in, in our approach that, that we're just, you know, investors are pouring in and, and applications for the batch two are pouring in, but we have to hustle. You know, we have to go and find those those startups that we feel would be a good fit. We make calls. We, in fact, this week, that's what we've been doing. We've been reaching out to founders just to learn a little bit about what they're building and encourage them to apply to our program um, and make the case, right? We don't take anything for granted, even though we are partner with the Thunder, even though we've had an, a, an amazing batch comprised of really cool entrepreneurs we realize that we still have to get out there and do do recruitment ourselves. Right. So you would say that one of the challenges would, would be just the recruiting aspect. Uh, would there be any other challenges that you guys have faced uh, recently that you've been working through? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so many. I mean, you know, so there's a the recruitment, obviously, of, of applica- applicants, um, founders, um, there's the challenge of recruiting investors and, and, you know, and that's, that comes in many ways, right? One, mobilizing the local investment community um, to perhaps um, grow the appetite to invest in early stage. Um, Oklahoma is actually, a, a, we, we have a lot of wealth in the state and a lot of investment um, arms. Um, they tend to deploy that capital, however, in latter stage investments or industries and sectors that they're comfortable with, which there's no problem in that. However, in order to 
create and cultivate a thriving uh, startup community, we need to have more investment lured in into early stage. Um, and so that that's a challenge, you know, mobilizing the local investment as it relates to attracting out of state investors. Um, you know, it's a sense that because they don't know Oklahoma, <laughs> it, it's it's having to do a lot of education and awareness of all the neat things that we have going on in our community, and and making the 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 case that we do have really viable and talented um, founders and startups um, here that they should be investing in, um, right? So I mean, it's this is some of the challenges that that we deal with every day. And would you say that the support? Would you say that the support has been uh, good? Has it been well received in what you guys are doing, or is it still something that you're trying to get your brand out there and also help people understand the mission of Stitch Crew? Yeah, so I think that the support overall from the community has been outstanding and, and really, um, really for it. Um, I think that there's still, you know. It, Although there's a few um, programs that support entrepreneurs, whether they're incubators, some others are accelerators, but they're tied more to university programs. So I think that the whole notion of accelerators and startups even, it's, it's a little bit new. So we have yeah. to do some, uh, some education of how we, um, you know, most of the economic development arms, for example, um, evaluate and do their key performance metrics based on job create created right by companies well in startups is the opposite right in fact we don't want you guys to hire too many people at the beginning right because that's the beauty of technology perhaps you can infuse a lot of technology to be able to minimize your cost and your overhead and so that's you know that's just one example for example that we have to um educate our fellow economic developers around uh, here and community and civic leaders that you can't just evaluate the startup community the way you would normally evaluate other ecosystems based on how many jobs they create right off the bat because it's it's contradicting to our culture <laughs> of doing things um, not as scrappy and, and, and cost effective uh, and with low overheads. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. The only thing I would add is the support has been great. Um, I don't, I don't feel like we will ever be out of, out of promoting and trying to, I don't want to say build credibility with stitch crew, but you know, we back to earlier. I mean, we're, we're pretty new um, as far as what, what Eric and I do, at least in Oklahoma city. So, you know, I think there, there is a, a component to educating people on not just what, an accelerator does, but you know, who was stitch crew. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think we'll be dealing with that for a while, but you know, um, we, we have great connections here and a, and a great network here. So I, I think we're building that, that credibility. So you've had 12 founders go through the program thus far. So though you're a, a startup and you've uh, just started, you've had a, a really good group I can say so myself, just being in it, just being with, with the founders, they were an amazing group of people. So what guidance would you have for people looking at your accelerator or another accelerator? What guidance would you give to them when choosing one and moving through the program? That's a great question. Um, you know, I think that ultimately um, it has to do a lot with culture. Right. And there's always going, hopefully, that's, that's what we hope, Chris and I, that there are more accelerators and more platforms that, that enable and support entrepreneurs. I think that what we would say is just make sure that your um, ethos align with that of the program that you choose to go with. I mean, you're going to identify with people because that's the key, right? That you spend so much time with, with the managing directors of that program because they're going to be providing you with access to other people or, or providing you feedback, um, working with you to problem solve. And so at the end of the day, you want to make sure that your personalities match and, and that your ethos aligns and that um, you're, you're going to be cool working with those people. Um, so I think that that's how accelerators primarily will differentiate. Of course, there's, there's always the, um, for example, our accelerator, 
um, doesn't, um, we believe in investing in resource, not capital in the companies that, that we accept. So it's not like we're handing checks out. Um, we also don't take equity, however, in the companies that we, that we host. But there are other accelerator programs that, that do. They offer cash in exchange for, for an equity play in your company. And there's nothing wrong with either or is just, you know, what, what makes sense for you. And, and, um, and that's going to be unique to, to the stage and, and the type of company that you're building. And, and I guess how dire you are for, for funding. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think a couple of other things that are important to look at, and this is not unique to the, to the Thunder Launchpad. Um, there's other accelerators that, that do this as well, but I, I would look at the mentor network um, that the accelerators have. I, th- I mean, that's such a strong component to a successful accelerator is the strength of the, of the mentors because, you know, th- th- those are really um, going to be the, the resources and that the founders are going to talk to just as much as they are the, the program managers of, of the accelerator. So I look at that and I'd also, and, and we don't have this yet with uh, the Thunder Launchpad, um, you guys obviously will be a part of this, but the alumni network as well. Um, the, you know, accelerators are only as strong as, as the companies that go through them. And then as, as founders graduate, are they coming back and, and giving to the, to the future founders that come through and, and giving their time and resources? And I think there's, a, that's a strength. So if accelerators are strong in those two components, then I think it's uh, well worth looking into them. Definitely. And I I think that's going to be something very interesting to see in the near future of how the founders will respond and communicate with each other other and also just uh, stay in contact in in the near future. Don't you guys think? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, we hope to have retreats and other opportunities where we still bring um, alumni in or, you know, uh, previous founders together. But even so, um, retreats for, for just the batch itself uh, so that you guys can get together and, and talk about the progress made and all of that. But also we want to bring you guys together to meet the future or the, you know, the next batch uh, that comes in um, because we're going to rely on you guys to also become mentors and share your stories with, with um, upcoming founders. Fantastic. So we don't have much more time, but we always want to leave with five takeaways, five key takeaways, and from the startup life and mentoring startups at all stages. So can you guys throw out five key takeaways that that our listeners would benefit from? So I would say the first one, you know, when you are looking, if you are looking at um, going the startup um, route, just make sure that you're um, that the problem that you're solving in your idea is disruptive enough and aim big, right? Ask yourself if if what you're building is in fact going to impact a lot of people. Um, if it's going to be ten times or more uh, different than what anybody else is doing, um, and don't be intimidated by your own, um, you know, by thinking big and going big, uh, because the the reality is. You know, whether you're with whether you're creating a lifestyle business or a high growth, you're probably going to spend the the same time building it. It's just whether a startup and a high growth startup, um, it's it's only sustainable if your idea is big enough to to go big. Um, the other thing I would say, um, and then I'll let Chris finish the other ones is, you know, make sure that you grow your network and that you're everywhere. Um, it's so important for, for companies, particularly technology companies, to know that it's not just enough to build a good uh, product. You have to get out there. You have to tell people about it, um, not just on online, but offline as well, and, and grow your network, um, you know, investors, advisors, employees, customers, um, just as much as you can network and, and expand. Um, I think, so here's one that resonates with today, I think, okay. And, um, you know, you, you can always have a plan, but you have to be flexible and resilient, right? I mean, things don't always. Amen, brother. Right. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, I think it's good Changes to be a every day. Yeah. Every single day you're going to run into this. So, you know, I mean, I think the word pivot gets used a lot, but you do, you have to be able to pivot and recognize when it's time to do that. And, you know, to have your plan B ready. I mean, it's, it's great, it's great to have goals and a vision and, you know, to be persistent, but you have to be flexible and be able to change based on what your customers want 
Um, so, you know, not, and outside of, of what you're, you know, not just your customers, but your, your, your staff and, and your, you know, your mentors, your, your, your guides. I mean, whoever you're, whoever's in your network, you have to be flexible. Yeah. And then I uh, agree. thing that we always say, and you heard us say this, um, we didn't have to say this to you, but to founders is, is to launch, um, early, um, you know, unless you're Steve Jobs or some kind of mad genius, uh, you know, you're going to start up with an idea and, it, and like Chris said, it's going to pivot. So just go ahead and launch, you know, and start getting feedback from people. Um, and, and your product ultimately is going to evolve. So something that we always tell founders is don't wait till it's too late. Just go ahead and launch. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you'll you'll perfect it as, as you start getting feedback and start engaging with with um, customers. And then the last one I would say is just break all of the rules that we just said. You know, part of being an entrepreneur is to break rules. So Chris and I don't have all of the answers. Nobody does. There's strategies for doing things uh, differently. Come up with your own and break the rules. I completely agree. And, you know, the, the thing is, is that the feedback that you just gave was phenomenal. But what you guys have taught me and our team is that that feedback has to be flexible as well. Uh, you have to take it as as truth, but you also have to know that it, it's going to look different from from each person and based upon their situation and where they are at the moment. Wouldn't you say? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I mean, the, the only the only thing that we say is you know take take feedback from everybody, and some of it is going to be good, bad, or objective. Um, your job is to discern what what's best for you um, based on the stage and what you want to build. Uh, so yeah. So I mean, as you guys know, you're, you're gonna you're gonna hear a lot of no's, right? Um, and I think, right. I think the word no has it has a negative connotation to it, but it's just feedback. It's just I mean, and it's just to help you get better. So it you know, it's it's easier said than done. Don't take it personal. Just grow from it. Right, and you know, someone someone told me yesterday. They said. No is just two letters, so keep moving on. That's and right. I thought that was, you know, it's so elementary, <laughs> and they were actually talking to a middle school group. But I, but I sat back and I thought, that is exactly right. It's just two letters, so just keep moving on. There's nothing else to it. I, I think that that was extremely encouraging, good, good highlight there. Chris and Erica, tell us how we can help you and where everyone can find you uh, because we know that we'll have people who have a startup or have an idea and they need someone to talk to and you guys would be perfect for that. Yes, so um, thank you for asking that. Um, the way you can help us is we're actually recruiting for Batch 2. So if you know of anybody that um, would like to go through the Accelerator program, send them over to our website, which is www.stitchguru.com. And our application will be open until July 31st, but we always encourage people to apply early because we um, make it a point to meet with um, every applicant if we can. And so the sooner you apply, the more time we have to evaluate um, your application to ask any questions that we may have and then hopefully to meet with you prior to making final decisions. So don't wait until the, it's the last minute. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for, for being on today. You were actually our first podcast and you guys Ooh. got the brunt end of it. Uh, poor audio and microphone problems and everything else. But you guys are so flexible and so patient. And so we, we truly thank you for that. Uh, Catherine, unfortunately, was not able to be on because she is actually in Florida and her Wi-Fi is not working. So tech problems all around, but we made it through. So we really appreciate that. And we're definitely going to be uh, talking to you. I'm listening. <laughs> there she is. She's. <laughs> I'm listening. I'm listening. Sorry, I'm not contributing because I don't want to mess up the podcast. But I was nodding and actively listening the whole time. Chris and Erica, you guys are amazing. Catherine, we miss seeing your face and your opportunity. <laughs> I miss you guys too. That is hilarious. Well, thank you guys so much. Uh, just remember, uh, if you if you do uh, need insurance quotes, definitely go to the place where insurance quotes don't sting at brightbee.com. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave us a chat or send us an email and we'll be more than happy to help you. Everyone have a wonderful day and we'll talk to you soon.